uh, I am going to put this video out on this channel so that if anybody from the Economic Ninja channel sees this, this is my secondary channel. I put totally different content, mostly uh, uh, real estate related because we're coming into this real estate crash. As we're coming on live, can you guys comment if you can hear me clearly? The wind's a little, it's blowing a little bit in my face, so I don't know if the mic's picking up. But what I wanna do is I wanna share something from a subscriber named Paul. And there's a story right now that's, uh, that's coming out. And I've talked about the UK and Europe and how important it is, how vital it is for you and me to be watching them because they are the barometer. They are the ones that are gonna fall first in my opinion. And when we see them fall, uh, we are going to see us fall in literally weeks after. All right, thank you so much for the sound check. All right, so here we go. Um, Nat West, this is the, the email I got, and then I'm gonna show you some photos and then there's a story as also. Nat West owns the Royal Bank of Scotland. Now, if Nat West uh, under the councils in Scotland wouldn't be able to pay their salaries, this includes those of the police as Royal Bank of Scotland pays the salaries by BACS, which stands for Banking Access Clearing System. This goes for all of the council's businesses or business, including the NHS. It's all going down and yes, their heads are in the sand. How tragic. Um, he wanted me to talk about this story, but first I'm gonna talk about the, the uh, what's going on in the UK and now all of a sudden my link is gone. Go figure, let's go back really quick. Yeah, let me pop this link up real quick. So right here, this is a sign that he took a photo of, okay? On a bank, all right? And I'm gonna read this to you guys. And thank you to the 81 people who hit the thumbs up. It says, looking to withdraw cash? Our primary aim is to keep customers safe and secure, and our branches follow our processes carefully to achieve this. This will include asking you questions about the purpose of your cash withdrawal. Everybody in America right now, have you been getting asked questions, being treated like a criminal in your bank? Put down below your stories of what's going on here in America. Now, this is happening over in the UK. It says, so we're gonna, we're gonna ask you about the purpose of your cash withdrawal. We may ask also for supporting documentation such as an invoice. Think about what's going on right now. Your money is being held at gunpoint essentially by a bank teller that has no stinking clue what's going on right now in the real world of finance and economics. Has no clue. And if you think you're a branch manager, you don't know nothing. Every single branch manager is walking around their suit all hand, hey, look, look at me, I'm the boss. You don't know nothing. You don't even know how money's created. But this is why we have to warn people. And, and I'm gonna tell you a story in a second about a wealthy person I just ran into. It's pretty interesting. Um, but anyway, okay, so they're gonna ask you for an invoice. Now we've already seen people that have tried to buy gold and silver with their money out of their bank and the banks stopping the, literally stopping the, uh, the wire and them calling them up and said, we don't think you should do this because gold and silver is risky. It can go down. They're like, are you high? Are you seriously on something? Does the bank now let you smoke weed? Think about it. Gold's one of the best performing assets since 20, the year 2000. You moron, but hey, 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 you know, sorry, not supposed to call people, no, I'm gonna call them morons because you gotta call a spade a spade. Moron means stupid. Stupid people speak of things they know nothing about. Think about that. So right now, like this sign, and I'm gonna again show it to you guys, there's some new people on. This was a sign taken out, I know it's backwards. It was posted outside of a bank in the UK and you have to take whatever's going on in the UK serious. If anyone's from the UK right now, please comment down below. Um, because this is coming here and it's already starting here because we've all had these experiences in American banks, right? But it's going to get worse. All right, so it says, we're going to uh, uh, ask for supporting documentation, such as an invoice. This helps us, oh, and let me give an example. I'm going to sell my tractor this weekend, right? And uh, I'm gonna go deposit that check, right? Because I wanna go do some stuff with it. So then am I not able to go pull it out? Think about that. And the guy that's buying it, I know him, and he's buying it for his company, so he wants to write a check to keep a paper trail, you know, for tax purposes. But think about that. Think about that. I've actually been asked before when I got a big deposit to put in, and they asked me what it's from. You know, I'm like, you gotta be kidding, right? The ninja causes a stink. They don't like it when the ninja comes in. But it's, it's insanity. Now, now <laughs> some of the tellers are, are part of ninja nation because they're starting to get it. They're waking up. But they're being told to do this because they wanna control your money. 
So it says here, this helps us validate the withdrawal as genuine and protect you against fraud and scams. So right there, you want to go and wire something out for, uh, for going buying gold silver? They're going to probably ask you for uh, an invoice here pretty soon. It says, please note that it is advisable to give 24 hours notice on large cash withdrawals. Get ready. I'm going to hear, oh, just let me ask you, what do you think is a large cash withdrawal? They want 24 hours notice for it. Put it in the, in the live chat right now. I just want to see because, and, and I'm going to, while you guys are answering this question, I'm going to make you guess what their idea of a large cash withdrawal that you need to give them 24 hours advance notice. I was speaking with a gentleman and he, he uh, found out what I do and, and he was asking me for financial advice. I'm like, I can't give you financial advice. And he said, uh, you know, I own my house cash and two other houses cash in California. It's, it's worth a lot of money, right? Multi-million dollar uh, portfolio of real estate and uh, a couple million dollars at least. And he, uh, he said, what should I do with my cash? I'm like, well, I mean, you know, I'm like, well, how much are we talking? And he said, $100,000. Well, you have $100,000 in, in one bank account? He goes, yeah. I'm like, haven't you ever thought of just putting it in two bank accounts? He's like, why? I'm like, well, what if there's a problem with one? What if the ATMs get hacked or any of this crap that's going on? Why don't you just put it in two different banks? And and I'm like, that's not even financial advice. It's just being wise with your money, protecting yourself. You know, there's counterparty risk everywhere. And the look on his face was just like, and he was like, holy cow, I never thought of that. And the sad thing is so few people are thinking about that. Now I put this uh, title up as clickbait. And it's probably not even gonna work anymore because it's been overused. But uh, I do it because people are like, well, you gotta put your money in the bank. I'm like, heck yeah, you gotta keep your money in the banks to do business. I own businesses, I know what it's like. I said, but do you have to keep everything in one bank? Why wouldn't you simply just go and put it in different banks, different, not the same branch, the same company, but like different types of banks, spread your wealth out, right? And the, the dollar amount's going to be on you. That's, that's the way you got to decide, you know, but the facts are, this is getting nutty. All right. So let's answer the question. I got a bunch of um, things and you guys actually, most of you nailed it. They said on amounts over 2000 pounds, <coughs> 2000 pounds. So what is that in America? like 2,400 bucks. I don't know. You guys do the conversion. Let me know. Um, if you would like specific denominations, oh yeah, I don't buy that at all. Give me hundred dollar bills. And they're like, well, you, you need to give us notice. No, you said if I want specific denominations. See, the fact is they don't have the money in the bank. If you took any bank in the United States or in Europe and you said, okay, how much are your deposits? How much do you have in your deposits? All right, cool. Now you have X amount. Let's say you got a million bucks. How much you got in the till? Uh, I don't know. 5,000 bucks because they know it's like JP Morgan. When he started a um, long time ago, all these people are putting gold on deposit in his dad's bank. And he goes, dad, let's go loan this crap out. No one's come to get it. And his dad wouldn't let him do it. And it wasn't until he died. JP Morgan goes, oh yeah, I got this. And that's how he got big by loaning out your money because, and it started the fractional reserve banking system really in earnest back then. Now it says right here, it gets even better. Uh, and when I mean that, I mean stupid. Uh, you can pre-advise us of your transaction via customer contact team or in the branch. It says in some instances, we may choose to decline the cash withdrawal based on the information provided surrounding the transaction. This will be at the branch's own discretion. Now what's your discretion? Well, we don't like what you wear today. We don't like what you're buying. Shoot, your name starts with an A. Yeah, I'm thinking of some names right now that start with an A. Think about this. This is absolutely insane. So let's say you go to your bank, you got all your money in it, you try to pull some out, and they go, yeah, sorry, we're gonna, we're gonna claim prejudice on you or uh, we don't have the cash to give you, and you need that money. Wouldn't it be cool if you went, all right, I'm, I'm ticked off. I'm straight up pissed off. And just by the way, you guys see me fired up. This is not the Economic Ninja channel. This is my backup channel. So if you don't mind hitting the subscribe button, and the, that would really help me out. Because you never know. The more crazy this gets, the more fired up I get about this. But wouldn't it be nice as you're pissed off at that bank teller and that bank branch manager or whatever because they don't know their job. They don't know what's really going on. You go, you know what? At least I've got another bank or two that I can go and source cash from right now. That's what's absolutely insane. And they're working on this right now to make it harder and harder and harder for you to get cash. You are literally witnessing right now. Look it, I'm in a field, California. Where are all the squirrels? There's the squirrel over there. The greatest bank run since the crash of 29 is happening right now. 
and none of your family or friends get it. So what are you going to do? Keep banging your head up against the wall to warn them? Or are you going to actually just go, the heck with this, I'm done. I'm just going to go crush it. And hey, don't worry, you'll have a place to rent. And I'm about to go buy 20 homes pretty soon. All right, so. Oh, gosh, my phone isn't going to work. Now I'm really ticked off. The phone, we're live. See, it just doesn't, it doesn't want to. Oh, there we go. All right, now, back to this. Let's talk about this story. This, this is really, really interesting. And again, we're talking about stuff in the UK, but it's going to happen here. All right. And this happened a little while ago with uh, PERS and a investment in tobacco. Okay. So let's talk about this. Highland Council quizzed over scandalous pension fund investments in arms companies. It says the Highland Council has been quizzed over its scandalous pension fund investments with campaigners calling for answers over support for arms companies responsible for attacks in the Middle East. Now, let me just throw this out there real quick. Your pension fund has got a lot of money in it and it's not all yours. Matter of fact, only a little bit of it's yours because they get to take all kinds of exorbitant fees out. Um, but there's a lot of weight and power behind these pension funds, right? So it's really, how would you like want to do a proxy war? How would be an easy way to fund it? Like, man, I'm, I'm Jeff Borgen, let's pretend, right? I'm President Jeff Borgen, I'm like, burr, 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 burr. just finished a couple ice cream cones, uh, fell up the stairs. I had a pretty full day, right? And I'm like, you know, I want to start a skirmish with somebody because my dollar's collapsing uh, and Congress won't let me do it. This is lame, what am I gonna do? Like, what do you mean? What? Have a pension fund help? What do you mean? They can invest in arms companies? Say, you know, it's weird. Okay, so check this out. Campaign group Highland Palestine. Well, that's an interesting name, Highland Palestine. It's just a really interesting name. Has challenged council leaders to rethink its financial links to munitions company responsible for manufacturing weapons used in bombings of Yemen and Palestine. Hmm. The Highland Council Pension Fund is invested in with seven funds, including Pyfroid, Pyfroid International, which holds shares in arms company General Dynamics. Look, I think there's a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes where pension funny, money has been used to pay people off, to invest in things they shouldn't have that we knew were gonna fail. And then pretty soon, who's gonna be left with the bag? All of us, our pensions. They're essentially broke, there's nothing in them. And the next downturn, what people don't realize is like, let's give you an example, CalPERS. Last time I checked, this is about 2016, CalPERS needed to make an annualized return of about 7% year over year just to pay its current beneficiaries. And that was back then. Now it needs more, because there's a lot more baby boomers left. And not only that, People that were just on the cusp of, of, of retiring when, when uh, all this craziness happened with uh, COVID, they said, to heck with this, I'm retiring. So the burden on pension funds is great. And essentially, it's just a Ponzi scheme. They need to keep charging the newer people that come in more and more for less benefits to pay the people up top. And a lot of that money does not only come from the newer people paying and everybody paying into it, but it comes from the appreciation of their investments. So what happens when this next downturn happens. You wanna talk about real estate collapse, you're gonna have everything collapse because pension funds are at the forefront of the Ponzi scheme. And when that goes, how many people now are gonna to need to sell their real estate because they can't, they can't keep it? And if they try and keep it, they're gonna lose it through foreclosure. And you wanna talk about a lot of, of stuff hitting the market, it's gonna be nuts. Guys, I got a video coming out on the Economic Ninja channel about me, what I just walked through Target and saw the gay pride uh, stuff, right, where the kids, and they were making it in kid sizes too. So uh, I'm going to go put that on the channel at noon today. So please be ready for that. And I hope you guys have a great day. Help me get this truth out because we need more truth bombs. We need more truth tellers. All right, guys, that being said, this is the secondary channel, Real Estate Ninja. Hit the uh, thumbs up if you can to help me out and hit that subscribe button. All right, guys, that being said, the Real Estate Ninja is out.